there guys, welcome to another Car Cup video. Today we're going to be looking at how to change the connectors on your battery. So this is if you uh, just want to upgrade your connectors or if you uh, have a, a different type of connector and you want to swap it over on your battery. So I have my 11.1 volt LiPo here. It came with Dean's connectors and we're going to be changing over to an XT60 connector. Um, the reason that I prefer the XT60 is just because um, well, it, it's similar, uh, it can handle a similar amount of current as the Dean's connector. However, I prefer um, the fit of the XT60 connector. I think it's a much more secure fit. Uh, I've heard of um, people complaining that the Dean's connectors can sometimes come apart. Uh, I believe that the cheaper Chinese models will do that, although if you have genuine Dean's, it's normally quite a secure fit. But I just prefer the XT60 myself. Right, for this what you're going to need is a soldering iron um, and uh, then a few different tools. Obviously you'll need solder and it's good to do it on a heat resistant surface. So that's why I'm doing this in my kitchen um, because I don't have a, a heat proof mat or anything like that. But if you have one of them then that will be good. You'll also need something to cut the wire with. I'm actually using a, a combined wire stripper and wire cutter at the moment just because I don't have a pair of wire cutters to hand. Some wire strippers, it's handy if they have a lot of different gauges on them. Maybe a solder sucker, you shouldn't need it but it might be helpful. And also something to clamp the XT60 or whatever connector you go for in whilst you're soldering. This is mainly because it makes it a lot easier to uh, kind of put the solder into the connector and also to and put the wire into the connector and solder, or solder it all up because if you, if you try and do it while this is loose it's nigh on impossible. Right, first thing to do, oh and also heat shrink um, for when you solder them up because you don't want there to be any chance of them shorting. And on that note, um, whilst you're doing this only do one side at a time. So make sure that you don't have both ends of the uh, both polarities chopped because if they short out then that could be potentially catastrophic for your battery um, and especially if you're using lipo batteries then um, you could end up with a lipo on fire in your house which uh, I'm sure no one really wants. Right first thing to do is just to clamp this connector up make note of the polarities I actually solder mine the wrong way around this is just because um, the first time that I ever soldered one of these I soldered it on and then I realised it has the polarity mark on there so uh, if you can see it has the uh, let's see is the camera focusing on that uh, just about yeah, it has a little plus there and a minus on the other side focus isn't very good on this camera there we go, a little minus on there but like I say, I have mine soldered the other way around, so my red wire will go on the minus and black on the plus. <clears throat> so first thing to do, just to clamp this up. So this is my kind of makeshift clamp. Obviously if we have a, a vise, it will be much better than this, but this will have to do for now. And uh, let's get cracking. So I think that I will do the negative wire first. So get your wire cutters and uh, just chop that off. Right then, like I say, ensure you only do one side at a time. Then you want to strip off a short section of wire. You only really want enough to uh, be able to solder it so I would recommend not really going uh, let's see if we can get that to focus yeah not really doing more than about that that kind of a length so maybe uh, five or six millimeters right then oh sorry I think I just kicked the uh, kick the stand oh well Cool, nice and easy. 
Um, if you're using wire with a, a silicon coating, it's generally very easy to strip it. You just have to get the right size. Um, I like to give mine a, a little twist just to, to hold all the internal fibers together. And now what you want to do is you want to tin this side of the wire. So when I say tin, I mean um, coat that side of the wire with solder. Um, what you don't want is a dry solder joint because uh, what will happen is uh, say you have solder inside the connector but not on the end of the wire then <clears throat> it should be fine because we're going to be flooding that connector with solder but what could potentially happen is that the wire doesn't actually take to the solder um, and then you end up with a very very loose connection and that could just pull out which is obviously not something that you want right then I prefer lead based solder because it, I think it generally has a a lower melting point. Right. Make sure your soldering iron is nice and hot. And then proceed with soldering that up. So a good thing to do is just to put a little bit of solder on the end of that soldering iron. It just helps with the heat transfer. You shouldn't need loads on the end there, but enough to help the, uh, the solder to take. Another thing to just to say is um, try and make, uh, do your soldering in short bursts, um, just to stop the wire from heating up too much. Um, you don't want to be transferring too much heat down that wire into the battery because it's, it could be potentially harmful to the battery. So there we have one end soldered up and uh, we'll get your heat shrink and just pop that over the end there. Alright then, so we want to solder this side of the connector now. So what I prefer to do is just to completely fill that connector with uh, with solder. So let's see if we can get a bit of zoom on there. Right then, hopefully this will go relatively well. Right then, so just tin the end of your soldering iron again. Stick it in there and just keep them feeding the solder in. And fill up that little reservoir. Try not to overfill it. Actually, I think I have put a little bit too much in there. This is where the solder sucker comes in handy. Right, so we've got a good amount of solder in there. Now we want to take this end of the wire. And feed that into the connector. Apologize if it's uh, slightly off center. So heat up the solder so that it's liquid inside the connector and then feed the end of the wire in. Cool, good. Now I'll just drop that heat shrink over. There should be a reasonable amount of heat still in there um, which might help the heat shrink. Uh, just kind of shrink a little bit around the actual solder joint. Just use if you have a heat gun, this is, it can be very useful for this. You just use your soldering iron, very gentle, 
touches just to help the uh, heat shrink to enc enclose the entire wire in case encapsulate not quite sure what the correct word is cool and just uh, try and get it to be nice and even all the way around if you can right that is one side done so just release that so we have to be careful the uh, connector might still be a bit hot actually it's not too bad it's pretty cool just zoom out a bit right so come on there we go not, maybe not the prettiest of jobs but it works if you have a heat gun it will make the um, heat shrink uh, shrink nice and uniformly around it so it should look quite a bit nicer than this that'll work and I'll just uh, bend that out of the way a little bit for doing the other side Cool, great. Um, and now we've got to start on the other side of the wire. So we've just done that side of the wire, the negative side, and now we're going to switch over to the positive side. It sounds like something out of Star Wars. Join the positive side. Unfortunately, this isn't very good at the moment. Right, so we have one Dean's connector free. That can now go in your spares box or bag of bits, whatever you do with them. I think I normally just keep a little bag and then occasionally sell all the bits together. Right, let's take our wire strippers. Nice and easy. Okay. Time to tin this bit of wire. Get our soldering iron. And we just tin the end of the soldering iron. If you do have a vice that makes this whole process a lot easier. Okay, that should be enough. Especially with turning the wire, it just, I don't know, it's quite nice to have a, a sturdy platform so that you know, whatever you're soldering uh, doesn't move. Right, let's clamp this down. Make sure you don't forget to put the, uh, the heat shrink on the wire. Uh, I've done that before where uh, I got to the end of the job. Looks slightly to the side. Saw that my heat shrink was uh, not on the wire. Very frustrating. Had to desolder it and then put the heat shrink on, then resolder it. Very frustrating. So make sure you keep the heat shrink on the wire. Okay, now we're going to fill up that side with solder again. I do hope that you can see. I my hand might well be getting in the way, but I can't tell that from where I am. Right. Soldering iron. Okay. Just a little bit of solder on that soldering iron. I think it just helps with heat transfer, really. solder in there, fill up the hole. Okay. 
Cool, great. Grab our wire. Keep that solar fluid. And push the wire in. Nice. And just put the soldering iron to the side. Just to, as a way of um, warning, you want to be in a relatively open space. Um, or if you're not, then have a extractor fan um, because the fumes from the solder can be harmful. <laughs> and uh, I, so I've, um, for my job, I've done a lot of soldering and uh, it's not a very well ventilated room. So you do end up getting very lightheaded after a short while if you don't have proper ventilation um, so try and do it in an open space right now just give that heat shrink a little hand another advantage of using some kind of clamp whilst doing this is that it helps you to stop from burning your hands um, even just on the the outside of the connectors so these um, the material that these connectors are made from is a very heat resistant material it's very nice and um, that's if you get a genuine one um, the only problem I've seen is with uh, non-genuine Dean's connectors where um, the genuine ones are made of a nice heat resistant material but the, uh, the fake ones which are I think generally Chinese um, aren't they're just made of some kind of normal plasticky stuff which melts quite easily but because they're heat resistant they can take a lot of heat on them and they can get very hot and if you can avoid burning your fingers by having it clamped it's a very big plus great I think that's there Nice, I'll just zoom out again. Right, there we go. Focus in on that. And that is one soldered XT60 connector. <coughs> it's uh, well, potentially worth getting out a voltmeter if you have one, sticking you know, one probe in each end and just making sure that you know, you're getting a good connection, make sure that all the voltage is there that you expect. Um, and uh, yeah, just plug it into your gun, uh, give it a couple of test shots. If it's just come from a, uh, a retailer, then potentially um, it might not be uh, fully charged. So I don't know, you might want to test it before you try charging it because if uh, you've got a dodgy connection, then charging it could cause a lot of trouble. Um, so just uh, put it in your gun to test it out and uh, try a few shots. Um, give a, give the the wires a little wiggle um, down at this end uh, whilst it's in the gun. Just give it a, you know, a quick you know, couple of little tugs. It should be absolutely solid. It should be very secure. So tugging on it, there should be absolutely no movement. Um, and that's it. Uh, obviously turn off your soldering iron leave it for a little while, pack up and all that, just you know, be nice and clean and tidy, I like to keep everything organised, uh, you may not, whatever. And thanks for watching, I hope that you, know, you guys find that helpful again, um, thanks for the good reviews on my previous video, and uh, yeah, goodbye.